How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Creator's Process. As you know, my name is Jaden. Right next to me, I've got Richard. How are you doing today, man? Hi. Yeah, that's good. And um, so tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, what do you do? Well, I, um, I do various things, but relevant to this discussion, I, I work as a life model. Ah, fantastic. And, uh, you know, I've worked as a life model for a fair while now. And I also do some photographic modeling. Yeah, which, no. which, which I love doing. Oh, it's amazing. And well, we just did a shoot together, which was really awesome. Yeah. First time working together, and definitely won't be the last. Terrific. <laughs> It'll be really yeah, awesome. It's, it's and a fun shoot. I'm looking forward to seeing the results. Oh, I can't wait for you to see them as well. <laughs> and uh, so, how long ago did you start modeling? Well, I started life modeling back in, I can't tell you the year, but it was about mid 1980s. Wow. So, <laughs> quite you know, a while 37 ago. 37 years ago. Um, Wow. Yeah, it all started, I guess, how did it start? My wife used to draw me. Oh, really? She's a bit of, a, bit of a, an artist, so she used to draw me, and it sort of started that way, and I thought, I, I could do this. <laughs> and so I approached the, the Council of Adult Education that was known at the time. I don't know, do they still exist? Maybe they don't. Mm, not sure, actually. The CAE, as it was called, in, and, and, you know, got my very very first life modeling gig through them nice um at a, at a class and you know those days life modeling there was a lot less variation it was very classic yep. educational sort of setting art class type modeling that that mostly you did unless you got a gig with an individual mm. artist not that i ever did at that time mm. so i did lots of tapes and um colleges and you know art classes mm. and you know eventually you know, real life overtakes you and yeah. I kind of got into the corporate world and had a very enjoyable career and travelled the world and did lots of other stuff and sort of drifted away from modelling. But more recently, as I started to approach the end of my kind of corporate working life, I thought, well, it's time to get back into I'm it. revisit the things that I enjoy doing. And th this was one of them. So I joined the, the Life Model Society back in probably six years ago now. I don't know. Oh, awesome. And, uh, and and resumed and bit by bit started to build up the contact list. Yeah. And so I regularly model, and then I also started to do a bit more uh, in the area of photographic work. So I've done quite a lot of shoots now with um, with photographers. Wow. Um, and that's that's been fantastic. That's a whole other a whole other thing for me. It's 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 quite to me. It's it's similar, but it's different. Hmm. So there's a bit of a. A, a similarity, but then there's also a bit of a difference. Well, I guess the similarity is that you're helping somebody to make art by providing, by putting on a performance for them, effectively. Mm. What else are you doing when you're a model? You're really, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing a performance, I guess. And um, But, you know, when it's a painter or a drawing or sculpture, the I guess the whole process is different because it's mediated by the perceptions of the artist. Mm. You know? what they see, how they choose to express that, yeah. what ends up on the piece of paper, the medium they're using, all of these things sort of kind of create a buffer between you and the final image. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you see yourself in that final image if you're, oh, really, if you're yeah. really lucky. <laughs> That's it. With photography, there's kind of no hiding. It's, no. It, it looks similar. I mean, mm. what ends up as a final image is so much to do with the skill of the photographer, with the dynamics, with how you model. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's a much more raw and very, very intensely um, more personal kind of medium to work with. Absolutely. And you know, it's kind of more daunting, but it's also more rewarding in some ways. Hmm. I guess because it's an actual photo of you and then the way that someone draws you is their interpretation of how they see you as a model. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that there's not a matter of interpretation no, in photography no, as absolutely. well, but, but you know, at the end of the day, there you are. What, what happens after that is someone thinking, you know, to do with the light, the way the photographer works, the filters, the everything mm -hmm. that they do. But it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting process for me. And, and, and you know, you think about a, a photo shoot, like the one we just did. I, I didn't count, but there's probably a hundred shots. Absolutely. Yeah. And every one of those shots, just the slightest reflex change mm. that you make is different. Oh, absolutely. And so it's a different kind of working from standing for 20 minutes or from, from posing oh. for 20 minutes. Mm. 
um, although that I think is demanding and if you do it well yeah it delivers yeah. results for the artists absolutely and I think yeah you, it's interesting you mentioned that because it's like <clears throat> there is definitely a bit of a dynamic from when you're doing a class where you're told all right this is gonna be a 20 minute post so you have to stand there for 20 minutes but then with a photograph it just happens like quickly and then you only have to hold the post for like a second it's a split or, second yeah but, exactly but yeah. that split second makes a lot of difference because what you're doing in that split second completely will change the photo. Exactly. Yeah, so that's you, it. you really got to be on the ball the whole time. Oh, yeah. And like, you know, sometimes you, all you have to do is just tilt one way and it yeah. can accidentally either ruin a photo or make the photo even better. Yeah. Well, I remember doing a shot with Ross. Yeah. And I was up against this pole and he said, all right, no, it's not right. Just lift your leg a bit more. No, now your toe. So Ross, this is hurting. Yep. But wait, wait. Wait, hang on, now a bit more. And you know, just suddenly, it, the result was fantastic, just yeah. because we really thought about what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> and because he forced me to do it. Yeah, to put you in a position Come coming, on. keep going, keep Come going. On. <laughs> it's like that, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah. putting all the effort in, but yeah. And a lot of people actually, on that topic of it, don't realize how hard it is to model. Like people think, oh, you just stand there, someone photographs you, so it's pretty easy, and it's like, no, it's actually, it's a lot of energy and there's a lot of hard work, as you said, like, you're working all muscle groups and, you know, it's, it's quite a, quite a workout. <laughs> yeah, and you've really got to kind of be conscious of what you're doing. Yeah, um, that's it. Uh, yeah, I, I find, I mean, it's demanding, it really is demanding. Absolutely. And, but it's also fun. Oh, no, if you're not having fun with it, then you shouldn't be doing it at the end of the day. I think that's yeah. a really good way of looking at it, like, if you're enjoying it, then that's makes it even more better but then if you're not enjoying it then you kind of have to think to yourself why am i doing the well, right thing it? Yeah. exactly so I, I thought i would because it's really interesting because i think you're definitely one of the first models i've met that have been doing this well as you said you started in the 1980s like i um don't think i've met someone who's actually been doing it for so long and like i thought i would ask was there a so what was it like when you know back in the 80s to what it's like right now. Was there a bit of a like? What what were the differences oh, between modelling okay. then to modelling oh, now? I should I should say yeah. Just because you've been doing something a long time doesn't mean you get better necessarily. Oh, no, absolutely. But um, you know, experience does help because yeah. you get more comfortable with what what works and what doesn't. Absolutely. But what was different about the nineteen eighties? It was more more standard classical educational modelling. You know, it's an art class. Um, we need a model so that the students can learn to draw. Mm -hmm. and it was much. It was fairly structured. The teachers would typically be more um, clear about. Oh, I need something standing. I need this. Yeah. Don't give them too much foreshortening because they're not experienced enough, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And so you learn about the learning process. It was fantastic because you kind of got. You, after a while, you sort of go, okay. New students, don't don't curl yourself up in a little ball and you know give them arms and legs everywhere because they're going to really struggle with all those angles, yeah. with all that foreshortening. Most of the work I did was very kind of educational focused. Yeah. It wasn't the number of groups that there are now. Life yeah. modeling was life modeling is like a hobby for like life drawing is like a hobby for so many people. Now. Mm. It's just such a big thing. Oh yeah, you meet so many uh, people. In the eighties it was around, but it was more around in the educational setting, you know, okay. so it was TAFEs, it was colleges um, that did it and the occasional private sessions that people did. Oh, okay, so it's become a lot more like as a like more sociable like people from yeah. different backgrounds you know, people come get together, together yeah. have a drink they 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 draw hmm. um the pitch sociable they even now with all the themed kind of stuff yeah you know that 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 wasn't so so much so much a thing life yeah. drawing was just sort of bread and butter <laughs> life drawing that's it and do you do you like doing the themes every now and then i, or? I haven't done a lot of theme work i'd be more than happy to but i haven't yeah. actually done too many most of my oh. life modeling has been pretty straightforward ah oh, awesome with artists just just groups you know no that's but yeah great. that would be fun yeah it would be indeed life modeling groups if you're hearing that you know yeah contact richard yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um but no like themes are always fun to do it gives you a bit of a you know, a challenge like yeah, to, a bit of costumery, yeah. a, bit of, a bit of a bit of show, a bit of burlesque. 
Uh, exactly, yeah. you know, because it just it it's can, like people like you know JL who does top secret life drawing and even like sandbox and all that. Mm -hmm. When they add a theme, they always go that extra mile. They create a show, like pretty much they put on it as you yeah. say they put on a show for the people who are attending. Exactly, but then also yeah. it makes it entertaining for the people who are modelling for it, which is always fun. Yeah. So I think uh, it's gone from being an art form and a sort of a, a discipline mm. to being more an entertainment. Okay. And, an, and a form of expression oh, in, in and of itself. The, 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 the modelling becomes a show in and of itself. And I think that's, what, mm. that's probably what's changed. That's interesting. And it makes it more interesting. Yeah. You know? yeah, now that sounds like it was not very, very I mean, different. There's still a place for your classical oh, education mm. life drawing. I still do lots of stuff with groups that are being taught. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's great to work with stu new students and mm. experienced artists. And, yeah. You know, you get enjoyment from all of those different settings. Absolutely. That sounds like it's been quite a different dynamic change yeah, through it's good. it. And I, I think so. Was... I mean, I took a big break from it. Um, so I wasn't there for a lot of years. But uh, over the last few years, I've noticed that it's become a really big thing. Mm -hmm. A lot more themes and all that are coming yeah. into play. And, you know, of course, last year was pretty... Pretty grim for, yeah. for life models and for, for drawing. Uh, for for but, the art industry as a whole, yeah. Again, Zoom. Who would have imagined? No, like Zoom yeah. life drawing. And it, it works. I've done quite a bit, mm. uh, you know, a few things on Zoom. And it, the artists get a lot out of it. And yeah. it's very convenient not to have to drive to a venue. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's really interesting. Because, like, I've even talked to people about that going, like, you would have not thought before last year that life modeling through a zoom session was going to be a thing like until that happened <laughs> well it, it was just yeah. things are born of necessity yeah and that's it you know i think a lot of people at first would have said oh no no hang on because you know a lot of a lot of models uh don't want to be photographed oh don't yeah. want to get in front of a camera yeah and you've got to respect that absolutely so of course there's suddenly this idea that you're going to get in front of a camera to do what you used to do face to face yeah <laughs> oh i don't know mm. but i think it's been slowly accepted and the, but the really cool thing about it is that i model for groups occasionally and there's people from all over the place yeah all, all around country, the world Victoria, yeah. and england and various mm. other places are drawing and and you know, recently I was at a session and there was a guy from the UK who mm. was in lockdown and yeah. he couldn't do any, any live life drawing where he was, but he was happy to be able to, to come into to the group the as Zoom. well. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Like, I think one of the guys who runs one of the life drawing, when he started doing uh, the, light, the Zoom sessions, he got a lot of attention from all around the world. So he yeah. had artists from America, from the UK, from all around Europe and... It's his now sessions getting well known all around the world, and it's like it would have not happened if it wasn't for Zoom. So it's really interesting yeah. how many doors it's opened up to just the community as a whole yeah. and to bring it closer Indeed. together. Yeah. And I think that's awesome. And it gives access to models from all over the place. Yeah. For the, for the drawers. It'll be interesting to see once things start to get back to normal whether, yeah. whether you know, continues. I think there will be some that will yeah. continue, that have established themselves and will go on, but I think, I think people yeah. like the live experience. I think that, yeah, because I guess, you know, the human interaction with other artists, you know, getting the chance to see, like, I know that um, one artist who I've interviewed saying that she did miss doing the in-person because, you know, obviously lighting mm. can be very different. So when you see it on camera, to when you see it in person, the lighting's so different, and because yeah. she works a lot with light, she prefers being in person because it's the actual natural light that she's seeing that's right in front of her oh, that makes it work. Exactly. Plus, yeah. if you're in a life drawing session, if you don't like what you're seeing, you can move. Yeah, you can move. Other um, than that, and yeah. you get a different angle or a different light. Mm -hmm. um, in Zoom, you you're can't. <laughs> very much in the hands of the model. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I try really hard to get good lighting happening. Absolutely. And yeah. stuff like that and a, a really good quality camera so that it all works well but it is kind of two-dimensional it is yeah so it's definitely a it is a different atmosphere when you're doing it on zoom too because as you said it's very two-dimensional too when you're at a class and you can like if you as you say you don't like the spot you can just 
move the other way, you know, or you can move around to get yeah. a better... Plus, as a model, I love going around and seeing what people are doing in the breaks. Same here. And, no, that's... Yeah. And, and to be fair, all the sessions on Zoom, people typically go, here, I'll look what I've been yeah, doing. Yeah, they look. And, and then you're just looking at all of them going, like, oh. And they kind of understand that, you, you know, <laughs> yeah. it adds to the fun if you show what you've been working on. Definitely. Like, I remember I've done even those sessions, and it's funny, like, you have, like, 20 or 30 people showing at the same time, and you just go... It's just like, oh, yes. okay, I, I, it's a bit hard. I, I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to see everyone, <laughs> and then you end up missing everyone. But then the good thing is that when you go on Instagram, people posting it, then you get to see it on Instagram, and then you're just like, oh, I didn't see that one. So you kind of then see the ones that you missed out on seeing yeah. when yeah. you're on Zoom. <laughs> it's, it's useful. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I, I definitely think there's nothing better than when you're in person and you're, you get to see it in person and I you get to so. look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's and much, it's, it's much more fun. No, that's it. And um, so I guess um, I'll ask you, what was, um, I, you said that, you know, you started modeling because your wife drew you once before and you thought, oh, no, I think I can do this. Like, yeah. was there, what was like some other inspirations that really drove you? Oh, and how about this? When you started it uh, six years ago, what was the biggest inspiration for you to go back to it? Like, what made you decide? Well, I always enjoyed it. Mm. And, you know, I hadn't done it for a while because, you know, you work full time. Yeah. Uh, job with lots of travel and doing sort of it's high stress kind of roles. You haven't got time to, to do stuff like that. Pretty much. And so I just put it to one side. I've always enjoyed it. And I thought, well, it's something I enjoy. I'm going to start doing things where I can express myself. You know, the jobs I do are fantastic for engagement, for for using your brain, for solving problems, but they are not necessarily a way of expressing your creative self, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, I can express myself through various crafts and other things that I do. I'm not a drawer, but I do I do woodwork and other stuff. But, you know, I find modeling to be a really creative pursuit in and mm. of itself and I, I think you know if you if you put effort into it you can become it becomes an expression of itself and, I, mm. and so I, I wanted to do something um, that was you know mm. more about me mm, fair enough and so that's why I got back into it mm. so it's like in a way it's like a creative outlet yeah. for you. plus I knew that I was reaching a point where I was getting towards retirement time from from corporate life I'm not ready to just sort of watch television. Yeah. I need to do something with my life. And, hmm. and that was something. Yeah. Why one not? Of, one of the many somethings, but it's a, you know, yeah. it's a fantastic um, um, outlet. Nah, it is. And I think definitely talking to so many people about this, it's always people see it as such a creative outlet from their, you know, normal day to day life, you know, to take a break from it, step back from what they do like in everyday life and then go and enjoy and create mm. at the end of the day. It's such a amazing thing to do and also as a as a mature person I don't know you get to a certain point in life and you start to become you start to feel like you're becoming a little bit invisible you hit a certain age and suddenly you sort of think you know you're kind of invisible and I kind of rail against that in some ways um, and so modeling is really for me an important way of kind of keeping older people visible because they should be visible. They should, Absolutely. We should see all shapes and sizes and ages and, and types and genders. And and so for me, it's it's about kind of, you know, it's, it's about a it's, a, it's kind of a body positive sort of mm. aspect to it about you know staying the, staying in the public eye and being, you know, representing an aspect of life that sometimes gets mm. ignored. Yeah. Because, you know, not everybody sort of pays attention to older models or older people. No, and I think, like, at any age, it, you should be happy with yourself. And also, we should just be hmm. open to having models of, as you said, all different ages, gender, sizes, hmm. you know, because I think that makes it a more accepting and welcoming community. Exactly. And it's, you know, it's, it's great. Uh, kind of, you reach a stage where you get kind of comfortable in your own skin. You know, it just makes it easy to do it too. Yeah, it's kind of hard, I suppose, if you're in your 30s and you're trying to build a career. Not everybody's going to want to kind of do modelling, especially nude modelling. Mm. Whereas I think it sort of later in life, for me, it's easier. 
Yeah. I don't have to prove anything to anyone. That's it, you know, you don't have to prove nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nope, I'm gonna go out and do this and I don't have to worry about what other people say about it. No, it's like, just do what makes you happy at the end of the day. I think that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask you this for a final question. What are some of your plans for this year? Like, what are you thinking of doing? Well, um, like everyone else, I'm hoping that we sort of hit a, a sort of a kind of normal that allows regular life drawing sessions to start ah, again. That would be good. <laughs> um, so that we can get out there and, you know, I'd certainly like to do a lot more modeling and, you know, do some sort of more creative stuff and maybe more photography and kind of you know like pushing out the boundaries and seeing what else we can yeah do, that I can do that I haven't tried before yeah in, absolutely in but you know more of the same really I, just I enjoy keep going with it that's gonna keep going that sounds good man well I definitely wish you all the best for that and Thank I you. really hope that I definitely know that our paths will cross in the future we've talked about some few good future shoots so I definitely am looking forward to that myself fantastic it's been nice working with you yeah same with you man and um, I want to first of all uh, thank you so much for taking the time just to come onto my channel and invite me onto your property and just talk about this. It was really, really insightful. So guys, if you want to check out Richard's stuff, I will leave a link to it in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.